Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What's going on YouTube? It's Filthy and we're back with another video. Today we're looking at the patterns of justice. So this is going to be a starter guide for the monk. Uh, now we're running out of time, so we're going to try and whiz through this uh, if we can. Now season starts on the 20th of November. Uh, what you need to do is you need to make your seasonal character, log into the game, and then you're going to basically do the challenge drift. You're going to get one of these little cash things now. Inside it is all the goodie bag stuff. So this is how we're going to power up the character. So we get the uh, bounty mats, which are obviously super handy for extracting stuff. Veil crystals, arcane dust, shards, DBs, reusable parts. And we also did get like 4 million gold. Now, I would probably still always start off doing the same sort of thing. So I come speak to this vendor. I buy some stuff. I'll obviously hire myself a follower. Uh, and then I still personally do look to go and do one of the kind of boss bounties if it's available. So Magda's not cool because again, it's just you can power yourself up with some gear. Uh, it is pretty nice. Early on, you want to go to the ruins of Sashron and go get the cube. I'm not going to demonstrate that. We did that in the Necro Guide. Obviously, you go off and you get it, and it kind of unlocks uh, loads of stuff for us. So when you get back, you want to try and mask a bonus as you go. Obviously, play on the highest difficulty you can. Uh, we're still getting through it to get as much XP as you can. Um, you you won't be a massively high level by the time you come back, so there's nothing really you can balk or get wrong. Just stay under level 16 uh, because it does affect your blood shard pool. But when you do get back, I probably would make a two-handed mace. Uh, I used to always say axe, but um, someone was saying that mace has got like a better damage range on it. Uh, so this obviously is for the two-handed uh, level trick. So you craft it. We we basically hope that it's got life per hit and CC. Um, now you can you can wait to do this until like level 40. You'll have more mats to craft more of these options. Uh, and then obviously you take it to the mystic and you roll off the, um, the, the non-CC secondary. So let's see if we can find one with life per hit. Uh, see if we can get lucky. No, never mind. Right, so this one doesn't have CC, but obviously these other two do. So you just basically go and pick the life per kill uh, and you re-roll it at the Mystic. And pretty much anything over a 20 banger uh, is pretty good. That's pretty much what I would be talking about and taking. So if you did have life per hit, so again, if you waited a little bit, maybe you could possibly box one of these stats off. And then you just basically keep flipping this uh, until you get something better than three. So I, as I said, I tend to go for 20. You need to balance your gold. That's obviously up to you how many goes you want to go. Some people say five or six goes. Um, I tend to do a lot more than that, but you know, it's to each their own. Making them is expensive. Um, so you kind of have to balance the, um, the, the veiled crystals basically with the gold. Once you get something you're happy with, uh, you just obviously stick it in the stash uh, and then that's absolutely fine. You know, it lives in there until you come back for it. Um, I would also then probably do the Debo. So I would upgrade Debo's. Now, for, for some Wuku, I normally suggest fist weapons because there's two that you want to hit for that. Um, but, but because obviously we're doing Pants of Justice, there's only one fist weapon that really massively benefits us, and that's the one Kim Lao. So, you know, we're not too bothered about getting a vengeful win. So, um, I would upgrade this. Now, there are, there are a fair few that have got multipliers on them. Um, obviously, you know, you're hoping to get something good, and you can also, like, we can also match stuff so like this wouldn't be amazing but it's not too bad we get a free rune on tempest rush uh, but you know obviously balance would be the jackpot tempest rush damage you can also get things that buff like attack speed flying dragons fine and uh, incense uh, torch of the grand temple that would buff up wave of light and once you've got your debo if you've got lucky and got something for a modifier uh, you then come here and roll shards for braces at kadala again there's three in the pool at level one so we've got season memento again jackpot item because obviously it pairs with um the the tempest rush but we can also get gundo gear which has been buffed this season so extra exploding palm damage which is nice and then the other one is the pinto's pride uh, for wave of life and also just remember these things are still in the pool at level one you can always make yourself an ult when you get to 70 um, and that's fine now in terms of how you want to level uh, this always is up to personal choice we've got the clones this season for the for the shrine so you will be able to play at a higher difficulty than normal uh, and then you can basically do cursed chests you know or or you can mask a bonus Danktree, I don't know if this will come out before or after, but we're going to talk a lot about leveling strategies. But just get yourself to 70, just do it as best you can. Uh, you know, obviously, no problem. If you want to chill out and do rifts and just look for legendaries and take it casual, that's fine. If you want to do all the kind of chaining enemies together, again, that's absolutely fine. You know, you'll, you'll get to 70 fairly quickly because we will be able to play at higher difficulties with those shadow clones. 
Now at 70, you're gonna basically do the season journey. You're gonna get your patterns of justice pieces. Uh, two piece we can win against every rune and we do get move speed. So it's okay, you normally get three stacks of so 15% move speed is okay for two piece. Sweeping rune, runes, not really too fast. If you did find yourself a vengeful wind, you can then get 13 stacks uh, of sweeping wind. So that's cool move speed on a two piece if you do get lucky and find it. Uh, we also get Spirit Regen on the 50% on the, 50 on the 4 piece. Doing your GR20 shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, and then you can get yourself decked out with a 6 piece. Tempest Rush, uh, huge damage, which is nice. Now, I would definitely make a level 1 ult if I didn't get the Season Memento whilst leveling. So you can get this in a cube super easy, even if it's a level 1 copy. Just extract it into the cube, no problem. Uh, and then balance, obviously you're going to have to do two-handed Debos. But I probably would be pouring, um, I probably would go for the Debo first, it's just easy to hit, there's not that many in the pool. Uh, fist weapons are a pain, there are 14, and obviously we do need this one because it will activate Cyclone Strike for us, and it'll give us 600% extra damage. The good news though really is, is that's super easy to get, that's not too bad. You've only really got this as the one item. Now, I do have a raw gun, so you would need to go and do bounties. You know, a Zodiac's gonna be really nice to get, a Convention's really nice to get, a Flavor of Time would be nice, you know, Nems are obviously generally gonna be helpful. But if you wanna run it with a six piece, absolutely no problem. You know, a Kirishira Soul would mean that your sweep and wind stacks don't drop off. You know, you could take yourself a Witching Hour or just something with nice defensive stats early on in the season. Um, you know, so what would it be? DBs, we're gonna go one balance, we're gonna go two one Kim Lao, and then probably I would I wouldn't even bother looking for eventual wind with DBs. Once I got this, I'd stop. Uh, you know, you could just use any other offhand weapon, you know, bit of cold damage, bit of physical damage. Uh, you know, if you if you got yourself a GG weapon, uh, you know, you you could just chuck that in. Uh, and then DBs, I probably then would swap over to rings. You know, the Zodiac's very important for your perma uptime on Epiphany. CUE is just generally more damage. And again, you know, just pick yourself up a double crit amulet if you can. You know, flavor of time when it does pop out, uh, that would be good. Like, I mean, look at this. This is crap. This is one, this is like the best I've got, and it's still crap. Uh, so hard to find. But yeah, it's not too bad to build. I would do some bounties eventually, though. Rogue and Crimsons are really nice. Now, in this fourth cube slot, what we're going to do is we're going to take the one come out and put it in the cube that's going to be pretty much what you're going to see a loss of so if you're going to be super try hard you can use the shenlongs so these will give you a huge damage buff but they are slightly bugged and they are quite fiddly and then i guess if you're if you're less of a try hardy and more of a casual player this is probably what i'll be doing you take the paired blades to the estevan set which just gives you some more attack speed damage uh, armor and all that kind of stuff um but for speeds I think how do we have this set up? I'll put the I'll put the D3 planner link in, or I, sh I should say Max Roll GG planner link now um, for what we had set up. But we were busting out hundreds on PTR with 800 Paragon. Uh, it's super easy and it scales really well uh, into late game. I think maybe we did have these two on just for the move speed. But anyway, the, the D3 planner link uh, will be in there. But yeah, I mean, it comes together super fast. Uh, you know, stats obviously double crit. You know, main stat early on is really good. So as you're building your character up, don't be afraid uh, to take stuff from main stat. Uh, area damage not quite so important. Cooldown, I'd say, is probably going to be better. You know, you're looking to get your epiphany. Um, and yeah, the planner link will have all this stuff in, but it comes together quite fast. It, it goes really hard, really early. Um, you know, this automatic cyclone strike from one Kim Lao is just so godly. It just activates the braces because obviously they work on like, you know, blind freeze or stun. So if you can get that up a lot of the time, uh, the damage is just absolutely nuts. And because of this, Move speed on the two piece. If you do find yourself vengeful wind, it is really zippy uh, with the move speed, which is which is pretty good. But all in all, guys, this is definitely S tier. Uh, I'm going to be playing a fair bit of this on season. I'm going to roll a support monk at some point to gear it up. Uh, but yeah, if you if you play this, you can have a really good time. It's really fast for keys. Obviously, wave of light is probably where you end up as the monk. Uh, I've got a POG T T16 guy coming soon. Uh, I just need to get that edited off the computer. Uh, but yeah, that'll be out pretty soon. It's super fast for keys. Really early again. You know, you don't need too much gas on it. Uh, yeah, I'm very excited. So. If you're going to play Monk, hopefully this has helped you out. Hopefully we've gone through some of the stuff. Uh, for Blood Shards at 70, I don't think we did them. Obviously, just fill it out, guys. You know, rings uh, would probably be what I'd be spending all my shards on. Um, you know, because realistically, you can get that at level one. Uh, so once you've done that, rings would be the next one. And then probably the them. So it really isn't too much uh, for you to be going out of your way to get. So awesome, guys. I've been the Filthy Casual. 
Good luck season 22, 20th of November. Can't wait. I'll speak to you real soon. Take it easy. Peace.